Hey, noble ones, welcome to Metatron's Academy. This is the first episode of a spin-off series of my recent series about can an Italian understand X language. So, so far, with all the Romance languages that we have tried, Spanish with an Argentinian accent, or maybe it's called Rio Platense, please correct me if I'm wrong, but Spanish from Argentina has been the one Romance language that is still a foreign language for me, uh, that was, as a, as a native speaker in it, of Italian, that was the easiest one to understand. I could understand most of what people were saying uh, without any formal training. The reason why I decided to try now with the news, the official news in Argentina, is because if you have tried to learn a language, the news, so that sort of TV, sometimes formal type of register, can be monumentally difficult. I still remember when I was living in Japan, I spent four years in Japan after my university degree in Japanese, uh, among other languages, um, that even though I had already been living there for, I want to say, a year and a year and a half, and I was fluent in Japanese, I could speak and understand people, no problem, but the news were, like, almost impossible for me to follow along, and only with dedicated training and specific vocabulary could I start to finally understand the news. So, what's going to happen now with a language like Spanish, which is Romance instead? It was really difficult in Japanese. Let's see what happens in Spanish in Argentina. Let's go. Now, I'd like to underline before we start that, of course, I am not trained, so I'm not able to understand if every speaker, for example, has a, an Argentina accent. Uh, maybe uh, the, the people at the very beginning might not have it, but because people get interviewed, and a lot of this is set in Argentina, it's fine. It's still good as a way to test how much I can understand, regardless of what accent we have. Let's go. Eh, Tizas suena como una antigüedad, pero eh, es el aula, es la educación, lo único que nos puede sacar de esta. Es lo único que nos puede hacer libres. Mira. Una educación hackeada, eh. Hackeada, por un lado, por tema de inseguridad, pero también por estas estadísticas que realmente son muy tristes. Porque solo 13 de cada 100 alumnos termina la escuela en tiempo y forma y con los conocimientos básicos. Es un aplauso. Sí. 13 de 100, chicos. 13 de 100. 61 chicos de cada 100 terminaron a los 17 años. Interesting. So, yes, I can understand that they are talking about public education. I don't understand everything. This is definitely harder for me than just understanding, uh, like we were trying the other day, uh, a teacher explaining things in general about, for example, Argentina. I'm not sure if they're using a specific register, really. I don't know. Um, I don't know if that's what's putting me off a little bit. But I do understand what they're talking about. They're talking about the problem that not all kids can complete their education. It's talking percentages here. So 61 every 100 complete their studies, study courses uh, once they are 17. So I am understanding a lot more than I did with much more distant languages, of course. 60%. Exacto, la edad que corresponde. Hay una merma en el conocimiento eh, sobre todo en lengua y matemática, que son como las materias troncales. La fuente es Argentinos por la Educación, ¿eh? lo vemos sí. acá. Esto significa pobreza. Esto significa desocupación. Well, very interesting. So I don't know what the word merma means, but what I'm understanding is that the lady is saying that these are the two subjects that kids seem to have problem, the most problems with, so uh, languages and, and maths. And then the guy is saying, yeah, this means, as he pointed the language, oh gosh, what did he say? I understood it at, the, at that time, and then he said it, it's uh, unemployment with mathematics. I don't remember what it was with lengua, but I understood it at the time, I just forgot. Falta de crecimiento, falta de proyección, falta de horizonte, de futuro. Cuando decimos los jóvenes terminan en ese ISA, también es esto. Sí. Porque acá los empleos menguan, no hay posibilidad de trabajo. Sí. Y algunos que tengan la posibilidad, tal vez, tal vez, no digo siempre, tengan que estar demasiado calificados. A ver, eh, esta es parte del boletín, ¿eh? Esta es parte del boletín. Estamos con un experto que es Victor Wallman. Exactamente. Eh? Okay, so I think now they're going to talk to an expert. So let's see if he, not only what accent he has, but how much I can understand him. Nos cuentes, Victor. Bueno, cómo cómo se ve esta estadística y cuál es la lectura que hacen ustedes tomando en cuenta la historia de los argentinos y también la actualidad. So yeah, the, the history, actualidad sounds like uh, actualita in Italian. So that one sounds the same. I had a little trouble understanding what she was saying in the middle there. Buen día, muchas gracias por, día. por la invitación y hablar de un poco de educación en este contexto complejo. So thank you very much for inviting me and to be able to talk about the um, education in the, in the context of... El país. ...of the country. Por favor. Eh, bueno, esto es un aplauso. I don't know what he asked him. I have no idea. I missed that one. 
Sí, esto es un, surge un informe que hicimos eh, en el Observatorio de Argentina por Educación junto eh, a Irene Kidd, que es una de nuestras... Oh, I think he's like a doctor or director of the Observatory Argentinians for the Education. That's, that's what that translates. So it's a group with a lot of specialists that they work with. En caso con Irene hicimos la continuidad de un informe que habíamos elaborado el año pasado, mirando como contaban recién cuánto el año pasado. We would say l'anno scorso in Italian. This is an interesting point we could look at. So we say it differently, but I still understand it means last year. So why do I recognize it? Because l'anno passato, if you say passato, it just means that, you know, time has passed in Italian as well. It's just that we don't say that when we say last year, we just say l'anno scorso. But I recognize it, because if you say it in Italian, that's, it, you can say it in Italian, l'anno passato. It's just that no one says it. But so interesting. Uh, so I'm going to jump into another video, because again, because I'm not trained, and again, let me know if you can tell me, oh, this guy has this accent, this guy has that accent. I'm going to try and watch another video and see what we can understand. Nos hemos incorporado a la alianza de los BRICS, los países más importantes de las economías emergentes. Se abre un nuevo... so this guy said that we just joined. I, of course, I'm not here for the politics. I, I, I don't care. I'm just here to see if I understand the words. So he says that Argentina just joined this group called BRICS. I actually don't know anything about it. Which is like a, an emerging economic group or something like that. Un escenario para la Argentina. Vamos a ser protagonistas de un destino común en un bloque que representa más del 40% de la población mundial. Y al mismo tiempo que seguimos fortaleciendo nuestras relaciones fructíferas, autónomas y diversas con otros países del mundo. Argentina... 100%. I understood everything. This is so interesting. So, so far, I'm going to listen a little more. But so far, what I'm noticing by um, checking out the news is that um, it's definitely a completely different situation that I had with Japanese. And this has to do with the fact that probably Spanish, similarly to Italian, doesn't necessarily become a lot harder when you go into news register. Instead, in Japanese, for example, it does become extremely harder. And that's because the, it's, it's similar to what happens in English. I remember when I was an 18-year-old and was living in England, that big words for me, as an Italian speaker, were actually easier than common everyday words because they were Latin rooted. To give you an example, words such as proficuous, super easy for me. It's tough for an English kid, but for me it's easy because proficuo in Italian, so it's the same word. <laughs> so I suppose that this is why I'm following along without necessarily too much trouble. It would be interesting maybe for another episode to see if I can, I can follow along with the weather forecast. Oh gosh, I'm so going to look, for, look forward to that. Let's listen to a little more. Argentina fue, es y será un país integracionista. Es una... So he's saying that Argentina was and will be a country integracionista. I understand it. In, in, I mean, I do understand it. It's just that I don't have the background on, on, on the discussion that he's talking about. I do understand it. It has to do with joining. Es una política de Estado buscar la integración con diferentes instancias a nivel regional y mundial porque está probado que de ese modo aumentamos nuestras posibilidades de abrir nuevos mercados. De yeah, he has demonstrated that with this, in this way we can open new markets. We have the possibility to open new markets. Consolidar los mercados existentes, de favorecer los flujos de inversión, creando empleo, de aumentar las exportaciones y de desarrollar la aplicación de nuevas y mejores tecnologías. 100% once again. This is like, oh my gosh, this is freaking magic. If you think about it, this is a level of vocabulary that if you, let's say that you, you're an English speaker and you're trying to understand this and you come from zero knowledge of Spanish, it might take you some time to get to this point. And even worse, if you're a Chinese speaker or you, regardless of any language that isn't even European. But as someone who has, has no training in Spanish to speak of, the fact that I can understand something like this, it's so funny. Uh, to me, and it's really strange. And if you are Italian and you're watching along, are you understanding as much as the fact that maybe I'm fluent in English or in several languages? 
changing a little bit the results. Let me know how much you're understanding in the comments. And also, if you're a Spanish speaker, let me know if you have any experience instead of watching the Italian news. Um, and let me maybe check them out now and see how much you can understand. So, so far, I'm going to call it a day. And next episode, it's not going to be the next one because I like switching languages. But the next episode of this spin-off series is going to be watching the weather forecast. It's going to be great. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Metatrons Academy.